Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of exponential functions. So if you look at this graph, this is an exponential function. It happens to be y is 2 to the x, but the actual exponent doesn't matter a tremendous amount. This is it, the dashed line is its derivative. Over here, where the function is small, it's growing very, very slowly, and the derivative is small. Over here, the function is growing at a moderate rate, and the derivative is bigger. Over here, where the function is big, it's growing quickly, and the derivative is big. So whenever you have an exponential, the derivative is big wherever the function is big. The derivative is small wherever the function is small. <coughs> and I claim that, in fact, the derivative is proportional to the function itself. So. The derivative of a to the x is some constant, and, <clears throat> and that constant depends on a times a to the x. And what that means is that if you ever have a situation where something is growing at a rate that's ka times y, then you expect it to behave like an exponential. And this exponential growth is seen in money in the bank, where the, the bank gives you money in proportional to how, to how much you've deposited. Population where births and deaths are proportional to how many people are already here, and radioactivity, where the, the rate at which atoms disappear is proportional to how many they're there. Now, in this case, a is less than 1 and the constant is negative, but the idea is still the same. Whenever you have an exponential, the derivative is a constant times the exponential itself. So let's see why that is. If we want to take the derivative of a to the x, well, like any other function, we have to take f of x plus h minus f of x divide by h and take a limit as h goes to zero. But now we know the laws of exponents that a to the x plus h is a to the x times a to the h. And then we can factor out the a to the x and get a to the x times a to the h minus 1 over h. And now the limit as h goes to 0, I mean, you can plug in h equals 0.01 or 0.001 or 0.00001, and this is some number, and the a to the x just comes along for the ride. So it's a to the x times this funny limit that depends only on a and h. Doesn't depend on x. We, and so that this is our constant. This is ka. So we get the derivative of an exponential is a constant times that exponential, where the constant is this crazy limit. So now you probably want to know, well, what, well, what's the limit? How do we figure out the limit? Now, I don't know anything about a to the h. So you plug in some numbers. So here's what we have for a, for here's a equals 2, a equals 3, and a equals 4. When a equals 2, you look at 2 to the h minus 1 over h, and you just plug in numbers. And you see when h is 0 0.001, you get 0 0.693. And when h is negative 0 0.001, you get 6929. Well, that's basically 693. We see that when h is very, very close to 0, we get a number that's around 0 0.693. And for a equals 3, we get a number that's around 1.099. And when... <coughs> Uh, a equals 4, we get a number around 1.386. So, we don't know these numbers theoretically, but we know, you know, for 2 it's 0 0.693, for 3 it's 1.099, and for 4 it's 1.386. And the point is that this is less than 1. And this is bigger than 1. And the bigger A is, the bigger K is. So there's got to be some number between 2 and 3 where the constant is exactly 1. We call this number e. e is, by definition, the number whose constant is 1. It turns out to be around 2.71828. But we'll just think of it as e. And so the derivative of e to the x is ke times e to the x, but ke is 1, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's a function that equals its own derivative, world's easiest derivative. So in summary, 
the derivative of any exponential is a constant times that exponential. That constant is this funny limit. When a is e, the constant is 1. And so the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x.